guys, it's Brooklyn, welcome back. A few weeks ago, we talked about Apple's new studio display and some of the pros and cons about it. I have come to the conclusion that it is definitely one of the best displays that you can get for the money. But also, is it worth the money? Are there other cheaper options that are just as good or even better? Today, we're comparing the studio display against two other options the new Samsung 32 inch M8 display and the older LG Ultrafine 24 inch with 4K display. To start, let's talk about price. You have a few options with the 27 inch studio display. It ranges from 1,600 to 2,300. The model we have here is $2,000 and would be the one I would recommend. It has the standard glass and the height adjustable and the height adjustable stand. This adjustable stand is really great and feels premium. I mean, as it should, because it costs an extra four hundred dollars. If you can get away with not needing a height adjustment, you can save that four hundred dollars, though. For the sake of our comparison today, we're going with this two thousand dollar model because it is most similar in features. Next up, we have Samsung's 32 inch M8 display. This one does not have the customization options that Apple's studio display does, but it also comes with a great feature set. It is $700 and the stand it comes with is height and tilt adjustable. And finally, the 24 inch LG Ultrafine 4K display. A lot of us are familiar with this one. It has been on sale for a while and was the go-to display for Apple computers while Apple took a break from making displays. It is also $700 and does come with a stand that is height and tilt adjustable. So how do these two $700 displays compare to Apple's $2,000 display? Let's talk. Before we turn these on, let's just look at the external visual presentation. The obvious winner here is Apple's studio display. This aluminum casing is really cool and the height adjustment mechanism and the edge to edge display just cannot be beat. Just look at all these side by side. Yes, the studio display does look like it should cost more. It screams premium in every way. Samsung's M8 display has definitely gone for a different look with this white carbon fiber back and stand. Personally, I don't love it, but I also don't hate it. We'll talk a little bit more about the cameras later, but you can see here that the camera is complete is a completely different piece that you attach to the back and it sits on top of the screen rather than inside of it, like in the studio display. At first, I thought this might be weird, but in practice, it is totally fine and kind of cool. One thing I don't love about the Samsung is this little bottom chin that is kind of iMac-esque. But then on the right side here, we have this bump that holds the sensors for the remote. And yeah, we'll talk about the remote, but just talking about the design here, I don't love that. However, much like the camera, once you're using it, this isn't even noticeable at all. And then the LG display. This design is more, I don't know. It's just meh. It is not bad, but it isn't good either. It looks like a computer monitor and that is fine. The screen is in layered into these medium sized bezels and then also take note that there is no camera included here. So if you do need a camera, you'll need to buy one to sit on top. Honestly, well, I do. So that is one thing that throws off the fairly simple and symmetrical design is adding a camera on top. It is fine, but it's also annoying that the ambient light sensor is in the middle of the bezel. So if you center the camera, you cover up that. I placed the camera a little off center and I feel like this is the whole story with the LG display. It is fine. There's nothing horrible about it, but it also isn't spectacular. It is fine. Let's talk about hooking these up and how these would connect to your computer. The Apple and LG displays are very similar. They connect via Thunderbolt. However, the LG is actually a bit more versatile. It can also connect with USB-C. This is actually a bit of a strike against the Apple display is that the connection port is Thunderbolt 3 only. And if you have a fairly new Mac, anything 2016 or newer, it works great. 
But if you're wanting to connect and only have an old, old Mac with the original Thunderbolt and we're hoping this adapter would work, nope, it does not. However, on the LG display, that adapter will work and you can also use USB-C if you don't have the Thunderbolt. In a nutshell, Apple's studio display is for new or newish Macs. If you don't have a Mac, you might be able to get it to work, but probably avoid this unless you have a compatible Mac. The LG is targeted towards Mac users, but it is quite a bit more versatile and works with most window users or window computers too. Both of these also include three USB-C ports to connect other devices to. The LG also has an extra Thunderbolt port. A huge benefit to these Thunderbolt ports is that modern Macs can get charged from them. This is living the dream if you have a MacBook and frequently remove it from your desk. You literally only need to plug in one cable and you get the display, power, whatever USB accessories are plugged into the back of the monitor. The Samsung monitor goes with a completely different and super versatile approach with a few disadvantages. Let's start with those. There is no Thunderbolt here, which means you're going to not be able to live that single cable dream. You'll also need to plug in power to your laptop if you want it to charge. You do also get the option to use HDMI as well on this monitor, and that brings up, well, something interesting. The Samsung M8 is more like a TV that can be used as a monitor than it is a straight computer monitor. This is a big plus for the Samsung over the Apple or LG. The Apple Studio display is made for Macs, period. The LG display is a bit more versatile, but don't go crazy. It's made for computers. Don't try to plug in your Nintendo Switch. Seriously, I tried. It doesn't work. Don't try it. These are both monitors. As far as extra features, you don't get much besides microphones and speakers. The Samsung M8 experience is quite a bit different. If you ever have set up a Samsung TV before, it's actually about the same process. The M8 runs Samsung TV's OS called Tizen. That means you get a lot of cool stuff packaged in, like it or not. <laughs> You can run apps, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, Netflix, or whatever else Samsung TVs run. You can even put some picture-in-picture picture and have an app running while connected to your computer. And that's another cool thing. If your computer isn't connected, so what? you still got a bunch of other things you can do with the monitor. In this way, it is honestly more helpful to think of it as a TV. And using it, it felt a lot more like a TV than a monitor, and that can be good or bad. A lot of positive aspects of the M8 revolve around how and where you are going to be using it. Where I imagine the M8 really at its best would be a well-trafficked space where perhaps multiple people use it sparingly, something like a family computer. This kind of idea of how to use the display kind of segues us into the next, maybe most important category of comparison, the display itself. Let's start with the LG and Samsung. They are both 4K displays. The Samsung is 32 inches and the LG is 24. This is where the larger screen seems like a positive, but for me, I actually like the 24 inch LG and I think that one wins. The bigger screen on the Samsung, but the same pixel count means that all the pixels are bigger and thus, well, less precise. The display on the Samsung is fine, but honestly, it looks like total trash compared to the LG. There is a caveat to this though. The further you are away from the screen, the less you will notice. I tend to work with, well, my face pretty close to the screen, not like crazy close, but what I feel like is, I guess, normal distance. If you look at how the Samsung advertises this, you'll see a lot of the shots are from people sitting fairly far away from the monitor. This isn't how I would use it, but if this is you and you do sit further away than an average person, maybe this would be beneficial. Overall, the 32 inches of the screen on a regular desk just uh, didn't work well for me. It was too fuzzy and too much. I actually strongly preferred the 24 inch LG. I am used to the 24 inch screen on my iMac and while I like it most of the time, I occasionally do wish it were a tad bit bigger. 
So talking about Apple's studio display now, the 27 inch screen feels really good. A huge bonus is that it doesn't suffer by being bigger like the Samsung does. The Samsung stretches 4K out into 32 inches, whereas the Apple display is 27 seven inches, but 5K. This actually packs a ton of pixels into the space and it feels amazingly crisp. In use, the studio display and the LG feels very similar. You can tell Apple definitely collaborated with LG on this panel. The coloring is great, super accurate, and precise. The very, very clear winner of the best screen goes to Apple Studio Display. And in a fairly close second is the LG. That has the Samsung in third, but that feels a little generous. The Samsung M8 is a distant third place, I would say. Really not even close and not really even comparable. Another couple of notes here on the Samsung display. Just like a normal TV, there are a lot of settings for calibration. You can just plug it in and start using it, but you really shouldn't. The coloring right out of the box is not good at all. It took a lot of effort to get the colors to be close to where they even should be, and I still wasn't even happy with where I got it. I spent a good hour trying to get the coloring right, and then I just kind of gave up. The Apple and LG displays do not have this issue. The coloring is right out of the box, and that's it. Super nice. The Samsung has a matte screen, which I thought I would like, but I actually ended up preferring the glossy screen of the Apple and LG displays. However, if you are in a location that perhaps has a window right behind you and there's a lot of light, the matte finishing is helpful. It really reduces the amount of glare coming off the screen. If you find that is something that you really need, you can pay extra for a nano texture matte glass on the Apple Studio display. It costs an extra $300. While the matte screen does look good and does help with reflections, the glossy screen is a lot more vibrant. Unless you really know you need to have the display be matte, go with the glossy. It's cheaper and it looks better. The LG display only comes in glossy with no option for matte. Uh, this video is getting kind of long, <laughs> so let's just do a quick overview of the extras. Don't go quite yet. Cameras. I could make a whole video on center stage camera in the studio display. If you want me to, go ahead and hit that like button and add a comment. But the short version here is, just like I said in my previous unboxing video, it isn't great, but it's fine. I'd actually say the same thing about the Samsung camera. If I had to choose which one I thought was better, I'd probably pick the Samsung, but honestly, neither are very good. But both are fine for work, well, for FaceTime, at, FaceTime calls and Zoom meetings. The studio display has some very impressive speakers and mics, and I took several meetings using the studio display's setup, no headphones. The sound package is by far best of the bunch and feels very premium for a display. While I feel like the Samsung and LG displays weren't as good with the sounds and mics, they were still decent. If you care about sound, I'd recommend for sure getting some speakers rather than just depending on your display to output the sound though. And last little fun note is that the Samsung M8 does come with a remote, which really solidifies to me that Samsung is more like a TV than a monitor. It was fun though to play around with it and it was helpful, especially when switching between the TV features and, or Disney Plus and then just straight back to my computer. Okay, so final thoughts. I found the Samsung M8 to not really be a competitor to the Apple Studio display, or the LG Ultrafine. The Samsung M8, in my opinion, would be best used in a shared family location where it can be used for multiple purp purposes and secondarily also be used as a display. You can even airplay to this thing, super cool. I did not, however, enjoy using the Samsung as my main monitor. The pixel density is not good for how big the screen is and it was a real pain trying to get the coloring to be accurate. The LG display gets you 80% of what a good Apple display would get you at half the price. Externally, the design is nothing to get excited over, it's just kind of blah. The stand is fine, more sturdy than the Samsung, and a bit less finicky, but nothing amazing. 
The screen and coloring are very good, and once you sit down and start working, everything is great. The Apple Studio display has an okay camera, but everything else about it is exceptional. It is hands down the best display for Mac as long as it is a reasonably recent model. It has a high cost, but you get what you pay for in my opinion. The external casing is fantastic. The screen is unmatched and the speakers and mics are the best in class for a display. If you pay extra for the height adjustable stand, you will find no better. It is easy to use and get to the exact right spot. I tended to make a little adjustments throughout the day based on how I was feeling, just because I could and it was so fun and easy. With the Samsung and LG displays, I adjusted them, but then I never did it again. The process was fine, but just not that premium experience that you get with that the studio display. So, is almost three times the cost worth the premiumness? That's really subjective. I can say for me, I've been pretty happy with the LG display for the past few years, and except for the external design, it's fine for me. I personally could not use the Samsung as my main display all day, but I don't think that's what it's made for. And well, the studio display, it is just the best in every single way, worth the price for sure. But is the LG worth its price? Also yes. And the Samsung, it could be the perfect display for the right situation. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do any of you have these and disagree? Was this helpful in making a decision on what to buy? I'd really like to know. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you in the next one.